Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, my name is Michelle. I'm usually the one you guys are talking to on um, in the chat and on my videos. Um, today, we're going to go over our new feature that was released on Tuesday, and it is migrating your 3D um, images into the 2D um, blueprints and, you know, kind of the feature, how it works and all of that. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. If you have any questions, go ahead and put it in the chat. If you can hear me, can you just put an emoji or wave in the chat so I can know? Um, you guys can hear me. Okay, great. All right, so we're going to start with a project I've already, you know, worked on, I've already started. Um, the new feature, you're going to start in the furnishing step. So even though this is going to be for the 2D blueprint, we're going to start in the furnishing step. Let's start with this, this container home. Um, and as you know, as you're placing furnishing, you can deactivate the roof or deactivate levels above using these two icons right here. So I'm just going to deactivate the roof to be able to reveal inside. And we're going to add furnishing. And I'm going to zoom in in the 2D window in the top right corner. This is important because this allows you to see what you're migrating over that's going to be on your blueprint. So just always make sure you want to zoom in. Um, I have three containers on this lot, so it's kind of zoomed out. But if you were to have one design, you should just have your um, 2D um design in that window and you can just zoom into the areas that you need. So let's zoom in here. All we've added about 400 plus different symbols to kind of match up with the catalog that we have in the furnishing step. Um, we don't have every single symbol. Like for example, if you had a cup that you place on the table in the catalog, we're not going to have that in your furnishing step as you can imagine, because you don't need to place a cup in the folder step on your blueprint. So but we do have like the important stuff, the things for the bathroom, things for the kitchen and so forth. So let's actually build out a kitchen. So we're going to, I'm going to switch the camera to the top view camera. And if you've ever trained with me or see any of my videos, as you know, I always suggest the top view camera to place cabinets because it gives you a better position from the top down and know where you're placing your cabinets. So switch to top view. Then I'm going to go to my kitchen, select cabinets. All right, so let's choose, zoom in. I'm going to put, let's put it in the back. Let's do like an L-shaped cap or thing in the back. And now as you're placing your furnishing in the 2D step, you notice here that it's not in the 2D window just yet. If you're placing the 3D, say, you know, it's not in the 2D window just yet. Because what you need to do is select from your furnishing step to add to your blueprint. So I'm going to click to select this item. And in the right panel, I'm going to scroll down and make sure it shows the display on the associated symbol in the 2D. Um, you can kind of see it. I need to zoom in more. All right, so here you go. You can see it. These are the, the, um, the symbols for my cabinets that I have here. As you can see, I have this kind of going into the wall. I'm just going to zoom here and I'm gonna move it out just a little. And you see that it corrects. So what happens is in when you place items from your furnishing step, you have to move it and resize it in the areas that you want it to look on your 2D steps. Now, it does not mean you can't add other furnishing from the other symbols in your um, folder step. It just means that, I'm sorry, I have a, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, it just means that the items placed in the furnishing step, they can only be resized and moved within the furnishing step. So for example, if I were to, and it resizes and moves in real time. So I'm going to move, select this item. To move, okay. And you see that as I move it, it moves on here. And even if I were to increase the length, so... You see that it also increases over here. 
and if I was to increase the height. Now, obviously, the elevation is not going to increase because that's not needed for your 2D step. Um, if you do not want certain pieces of furniture on your 2D plans, like, for example, you only want to show um, you only want to show certain cabinets, you don't want to show all of them, that's perfectly fine as well. You can go ahead and uncheck it here. As you see, when I uncheck it, it goes away. And another thing, if you don't know this, if you want to show cabinets or any form of side views or elevation um, from your 3D steps into our side view elevation plans, this is also where you are able to select that option. So choose the piece of furniture and then scroll in the right panel and you can choose that here to display on the roof uh, section or facade plan. So just, just FYI. Now, our symbols have... So if you pick a different type of cabinet, it doesn't mean necessarily that the cabinet in the 2D is going to change, right? Because it is a cabinet. So let's, for example, I'm going to choose now the size, depending if the size is different, the size is going to change. Um, but if you're going to pick a different facade, it might represent the same type of 2D plan or 2D um, image in your blueprint. Now, if I pick, no, those will look the same. Let's pick something like this. My internet is running slow today, sorry. So if I place this piece of um, cabinet here, and it's already selected, you kind of notice that it just shows a similar shape. It doesn't, it doesn't necessarily shows that is a completely different type of cabinet um, because it does have a similar shape. Now, if I were to change the size, when I go back to my folder step, I'll be able to see, um, I'll be able to see which type it is depending on the size and where I placed it. So now let's go over to our folder step. And does anybody have any questions right now? Um, hello, Angela. Actually, if you were to place your email address in the, um, actually, no, I don't want you to do that. Send us an email at support at cedro.com and I will send you our training video. It's called the Cedro Academy and it allows you to go through, um, like a, it's like a four hour self-paced training video from beginning to end to learn the basics of the software. And you also have access to our knowledge base. And I'm going to, let me show you that right now. Um, Make sure I'm clicking on the right one. Here we go. The knowledge base is when you're working on your plan, this knowledge base icon is right here. And it gives you a list of different um, steps. And in each step, when you click on it, it's going to take you to our knowledge base. And each step has a series of different tutorials and videos. Um, so that's already embedded in your planner. But I'm also going to send you a link to where you can access it without being in the planner if you need it. So go ahead and send me an email at support at cedro.com, Angela, and I will go ahead and send you those resources when I get off the, of the training. Um, anybody has any questions? Is it super pixelated for everyone or just me? Okay, can we stick to the questions simply mainly about the feature? If we have time towards the end, then I can ask answer questions. If we have time, if not, um, same thing like I got told Angela, go ahead and send me an email at support.cjo.com with your questions. If it's a roof or anything, and I can send you some resources to kind of help you out. Do you have to select a box for each piece of furniture place or it can generate it for all pieces? Right now I have it selected um just to automatically populate if you shouldn't have to select it each and every time but it i guess it depends on if i'm working in the kitchen it's going to be selected if it's not populating then you just go to the right panel scroll down and just click the um the option to add it to your 2d plan all right so now when i click on my when i come to my blueprint and the reason it's pixelated is because my plan is really large. Um, so it zooms out. So as you can see, I have to zoom all the way in for you to see it. But when your plan is um, not as large as mine, you won't, you won't have that issue. And before we get off the call, I will go into another plan so I can show you what I mean. 
All right, so as you see, you see that I've placed these cabinets. When I click on it, it tells me that um, this symbol can be edited at the plan detail step, but we're gonna change that because that symbol can only be edited in the furnishing step. So remember that symbols added in the furnishing step can only be edited in the furnishing step. However, you still have the list of symbols here where if you wanted to build out more items, you can. So if I were to place, let's say an island here, I'm able to edit that island um, in the right panel, the size, the height, the width, the angle. And I also have the option to show whether or not change the color if I like. And a lot of, I know some people like this feature to be able to change the color and to be able to change the, the stroke type to know which items they added in the furnishing step versus the items that they were added in the folders or the plan detail step. So you can change this to a dash or you can change it to a solid line. And with these, with the symbols in the, um, the folder step, these can also be moved versus these, you have to go back to your furnishing step to move it to where you want it to go. And it's not mandatory for you to add items from your furnishing step to a 2D step. We added this as a way to kind of cut the time um, between like working on your 2D design and being able to have your 2D design or your 3D design coordinate with your 3D, 2D design, I'm sorry. 3D and 2D is keeps getting me mixed up today. Um, because we had a lot of people that were trying to say, they were like, the time was taking longer because when you work on a 3D project or 3D design, and then you have to go back to your folder step to do a whole another set of uh, symbols and editing. So we wanted to make it easier. That way you already have certain things set in your uh, blueprints. When you go to the folder step, you can just continue editing um, your blueprints in the folder step. Uh, let me... Does anybody have any other questions? Let's see if I come back here. And the same things apply, then you can also come back to your, um, you come into dimensions, you can add your manual dimensions. You can add wall-to-wall -wall dimensions. All of the same things still applies. Does anybody have any more questions before I show you what it will look? Because I think I picked a large plan. So I kind of want to show you what it will look like on a smaller plan, on an individual plan, I should say. All right, so let me share my screen. All right, so now this is an individual plan. Come to the furnishing step. I'm going to go to the ground floor. Once again, deactivate my levels above and my roof. Mm, let's add a maybe a couch or a bed in here. And if you don't know this, I know a couple of you guys are new to the system and when you're Placing furnishing, um, 3D furniture, do not place it directly on the wall. You want to place it a little bit away from the wall. That way it allows you to move it around. As you can see, you have these two arrows. The purple arrow is to elevate it up. The orange is to be able to rotate. Um, if you have other objects that you would like to rotate, maybe at an angle, select the item, and then this advanced rotation icon comes up. You have arrows or uh, um, lines here that allows you to rotate, but you also, those lines coordinate with the rotation icons on the, over here as well. So we just remember that when you're placing furniture, you never want to place it directly on the wall because it tells the software it needs to be hung on the wall and you won't be able to move it. So that was to happen, just delete it and then re-add it in like the middle of the floor and then you can move it close to the wall. So as you can see here, I have a bed and I'm, I'm gonna choose maybe a single bed here. So you see the size difference? 
even though they look similar, you do have the size difference in your um, on your 2D plan as well. Um, if I were to pick another one, the top two kind of look similar, right? So it's not that much of a difference in terms of like the type of symbol, but the sizes will be reflected in the 2D plan. And you can see those three items here. All right, does anybody have any questions about this feature? How to select the auto-populate option. When you come to, in your furnishing step, remember when you place the item in the right panel, scroll down and choose the box that displays the associated symbol on the 2D. So right now, I have it already selected, so it's going to automatically populate. Um, if I was to have it, if I have it unselected and I was to place something else, it's automatically going to be populated already. So if I don't want it on there, then I'm gonna delete it, right? It'll still be on my 3D plan, it's just not gonna be on the 2D plan. So remember that. And then anything you delete on the 3D plan will be deleted on your blueprint as well. And like I said, with these items on your 2D plan does not mean you can't add more in the folder step. So remember that. All right, we have about we have a few more minutes. And I know somebody was asking a question about the roof. So I'll give you guys an opportunity to ask any other questions um, that we can quickly go over um, before our time is up for today. So if you have a question, put it in the chat and I'll go over it. Um, let me go up. I know we had another question about our roofs. Uh, I need a deep dive on roofs. I keep messing them. All right, Trav. Uh, it's worth mentioning that if you have 3D furnishings that were there before the feature was added, you need to select. Yes, Jonathan is right. If you had a project you were already working on and you have 3D furnishing in your um, in your project already, you do have to go back to the furnishing step and select in the right panel to add it to the 2D blueprints. Thank you, Jonathan. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Jonathan. I, we really appreciate it. Um, Thank you guys so much. This is going to be replayed. So you guys are going to get an email um, with the link to watch this back. If you have any questions, we it's going to have the 2D and 3D as well as obviously the roof stuff that we went over. Anybody that would like the resources I was talking about earlier, go ahead and send me an email at supportscj.com and I'll go ahead and send that, send those resources to you. All right. You have a good day, guys. Bye.